The pace of the Russian attack slowed, but the Russians did not give up their efforts to encircle the city of Avdiivka despite heavy losses. The focal point of the struggle for Avdiivka continues to be the city's southern and eastern outskirts. Ukrainian defenders continue to hold back Russian troops in their attempt to encircle Avdiivka. Ukrainian soldiers are steadfastly holding the line, inflicting significant losses on Russian forces. Ukrainian defense forces fought off 25 Russian attacks east of Novo Bakhmutivka, Stepov, and Avdiivka, as well as 15 attacks near Sevier, Pervomaysky, and Nevolsk, Donetsk region. Russian troops have made repeated attempts to advance in this area to fully surround the city. However, Ukrainian defenders have narrowly thwarted these drives, subsequently launching limited counterattacks to worsen Russian casualties and equipment losses. Dramatic footage shows soldiers of the Ukrainian armed forces near Avdiivka destroyed a large armored assault column with a landing force of Russian invaders. This was reported by the Telegram channel ZSU Operations by publishing a related video. The footage was edited from footage taken by unmanned aerial vehicles after the battle. Two destroyed or damaged tanks and up to 15 armored fighting vehicles were seen. It seems they fell into an anti-tank minefield. In a new video shared online, a Ukrainian drone was in pursuit of a BMP-2 armored vehicle attempting to flee. The vehicle, driving beside damaged equipment from other unsuccessful defenses, raced at maximum speed to avoid becoming a target for Ukraine's FPV drone. Despite the possibility of drones chasing them, the fast-paced movement on a road previously used for attacks made it susceptible to being mined by Ukrainian forces. As the armored vehicle high sped along at approximately, it overlooked a visible mine line up ahead. With driving, the high-speed approach of the BMP-2 resulted in it running straight over the mine, causing the vehicle to crash off the road. This incident caused an explosion in the armored vehicle. In addition, the battle for KRY and KY is a nightmare for both sides. That's how one anonymous Ukrainian Marine, presumably from the 35th Brigade, described to the New York Times Ukraine's two-month-old operation to seize and hold a bridgehead across the Dnipro River in southern Ukraine's Kherson Oblast. But the heavy casualties the Ukrainian 35th Brigade has suffered in KRY and KY belie the much heavier casualties the Russian 810th Marine Brigade and 104th Air Assault Division have suffered trying and so far failing to dislodge the 35th. The Russians can sustain a loss of around 150 or 200 vehicles a month without shrinking their frontline force. The KRY and KY battle, along with Ukraine's tenacious defense of Avdiivka in the east, in recent months have cost Russian forces more equipment than they can spare, and have robbed the Russians of some, if not much, of the excess combat power they would need for a breakthrough this winter. Besides, Russia launched 31 drones and two missiles at Ukraine on December 25, mostly targeting the south of the country. With their defenses destroying 28 drones and both missiles, the Ukrainian military said on Monday. As a result of air combat, the Ukrainian Air Force and Defense Forces destroyed 28 shade attack drones in Odessa, Kherson, Mykolaiv, Donetsk, Kirovorad, and Kamelnitsky regions, Ukraine's Air Forces said. The drones were launched from Russian occupied Crimea. It said, the military said debris from the down drones damaged technical facilities in the Odessa port, as well as an unoperable administrative building and a warehouse. In the Kyrgyzstan region, a fire broke out in a warehouse, the military said. No people were injured, the military added. 
Ukraine received $1.34 billion under the World Bank's public expenditures for administrative capacity endurance in Ukraine, the Ukrainian Finance Ministry said on Monday. The ministry said in a statement the financing consisted of a $1.086 billion loan from the World Bank, a $190 million grant from Norway, a $50 million grant from the United States, and a $20 million grant from Switzerland. The ministry said the funds would be used to partially compensate for non-security and defense-related expenditures of the Ukrainian state budget, including old-age social payments and payments to employees of the state emergency service. International financial assistance is a significant contribution to maintaining Ukraine's financial and economic stability and allows us to provide priority social expenditures during the war, Ukraine's finance minister Sergei Marchenko said.